So there's no denying that fall is coming. Our maple leaves just started falling about three days ago. One of my fall traditions or, or procedures, I guess, is um, getting all the tools, hand tools, ready for winter. And that entails uh, getting everything coated with oil, tools that have been used heavily to be sharpened, anything that's leather or wood to be treated, leather sheaths treated with open offs, and of course, boiled linseed oil on all of the handles. And then of course, sharpening, sharpening the tools. But what I do wanted to cover today is, um, is, is about removing varnish from wooden handles. Most of the wooden handle tools that we buy today, for some reason, I don't know why, are covered in varnish. Even good ones, like the Rogue tools. The Rogue tools come with varnished handles. And you can see this one here, just after one summer, that varnish is starting to crack and to spiderweb. So what's wrong with varnish? Why do we not like varnish on wooden handles? Well, one thing, it's slippery. It's hard to hand up, hold on to a tool that has varnish. It's, and that's really dangerous when you're talking about axes and swinging tools. The other thing is, is it gives you blisters. It's such a hard, uh, rough surface that it's really uncomfortable and very ungentle to the hand. So we want to strip this off. And sometimes this stuff can be really tough to get off. Uh, you, most people, I think, use sandpaper. I'll show you a way to, to get these things stripped off very quick, quick and efficiently, and then how to treat this wood before we put them away. You can see the difference here. You have a varnished handle. Typical, they, as the sun and the UV light gets into it, turns into this cadaverous gray. It's just an ugly, ugly color. And then you can see what you get from years and years of boiled linseed oil treating your handles that deep, rich wood color here, like we have on some of these tools, like your perfect, perfect example. They just uh, just get nicer and nicer. These are tools here, uh, the Rogue Pulaski's that I've recently stripped the varnish off. And so let's, let's get to work. So I'll show you how to strip this off and how to treat it and to properly take care of your wood handles. The best thing or the most efficient method that I found so far is the, is the spoke shave. Spoke shave is perfect for this. One thing you want to do is be sure that you set the, the depth of the blade very, very shallow. And be careful not to get over and get your blade on the metal portions of some of these collars like you'll have on rakes and such. So if you watch here, if, I'll, if I have this set properly, I'll just have a nice, just curly cues of varnish coming off. A little bit of wood, very little bit, but mostly varnish. And that's fine because that varnish gets down and gets into the wood and it's hard for it to take the boiled linseed oil. So if you take a little bit of wood or you get a little bit of some flat sides on there, there's nothing wrong with that at all. So we'll just keep working these around. I just chalked mine up in the vise with some soft jaws so I don't mar the handle. I just work it around with the points of a compass. There, nice, huh? Look at the difference. When you're setting up your homestead shop, a vise is one of the very first things that you should buy. Uh, it's just a, an essential item. A vise, when you're locating it, whether it be in your garage or shop or whatever, should always be on a corner post. Right here underneath of it, a good strong structural element, 4x4 four four or minimum, because a vise is something you'll pound on on the back when you don't have an anvil, and it needs to, have, to be really strong. So always put a vise on a corner, plus you can work around it from multiple sides, and you always need to get, get around a vise, so it gives you the most vers versatility. Also, uh, soft jaws, um, whether they're brass or copper or these hard rubber polymer ones, uh, are nice too because you don't mar your tools. You can work on tools uh, without putting um, deep indentations or scratches in them. There, we have finally have a nice handle stripped of all that nasty varnish that should never be on there. What a wasted and expensive. It's, it's wasted money. It's an expense for the manufacturers of the handles and just so unnecessary. And then we have to go to the trouble of stripping it off. So I, I wish uh, people would get on board uh, with that. So we're doing it one video at a time to educate the uneducated. 
So after we strip it with the um, folk shave, we want to sand it down. 180 is what I like. I like a kind of a rough, scratchy handle. Best value on sandpaper are these rolls you get from auto body shops. These are made to go on um, the long sanders, sanding boards, and they've got adhesive on the back, and I love them because you can just strip off a little piece. It's the perfect size, and it sticks to the back of your hand, and it's perfect. You don't have to hold on to it for, uh, for do hitting these handles. So we'll just hit all this really quick, knock down the burrs, and then we'll, we'll rub off the ends there where we can't get with a spoke shave. And we'll get that varnish off the butt end there. We'll work that down. It doesn't take very long. It's just good sandpaper. And then also right there at the collar where we couldn't get with a spoke shave, we'll hit that little extra and get all of that varnish off of there. Before we treat the wooden leather, now's the time we want to sharpen our tools. This is something that most people don't do anymore. They don't even think about it. It takes so much more effort to use a hoe or a shovel that's dull and the edges are all rounded. The work is hard enough without making it harder on ourselves. And with just a little bit of time and a good file, we can, uh, we can remedy that. It makes a huge difference. Uh, make sure you're, when you buy good files, uh, you put, put them in a cover. Granddad, this is one of the granddad's old covers. He used to just use uh, masking tape but it makes a great cover, and that way you're not having your file clatter around and get dulled, especially if you throw them in a drawer with other files. You want to be sure you uh, look, look after them. They'll last you a long time. So filing tools, whenever we're using digging tools, remember we always do a chisel grind. That means flat like a chisel. We just file on one side and flat on the other side. So with about a 10 inch bastard file, mill bastard file is the best. We'll We'll work out all of these nicks. This, file, this, this hoe here has been used heavy and it's going to need a lot of filing. So. so here on the back side here you can see we've got that wire sticking up. We've got some rolled edges on the corners where they really take impact. And so we'll hold the file flat with the back of the tool as flat as possible. We don't want to put a bevel on the back. And file off that wire. Knock down those high spots. Now to finish up, we'll flip it over. You can see right here is what I'm talking about. This is that wire. See that? Right there, that stuff? We'll change the angle and we'll go a little bit harsher angle and we'll just take and we'll knock those, knock those wires off. You can even take a piece of leather or a piece of wood is really good to take and to knock that wire off or you can just file it. Just keep working that. Work both sides and pretty soon it'll just come right off. Yeah, there we go. So now we're nearly complete. We've got the uh, nice sharp edge on there, all of the damage taken out of it. We've got the handle stripped of the cadaverous varnish, and now we're going to cover it with boiled linseed oil. On a raw tool like this, let's say we have brand new raw wood, like this rogue hoe here, that's not ever been treated with boiled linseed oil, we want to treat it every day for seven days. After the first week, then we're going to treat it once a week for a month and then once a month for a year. And then after that, once it gets burnished in and used and the oils from your hand on it, then just once a year is enough for our hand tools. Now, before you varnish them, let's say you have a tool that uh, you've had for years and you've really taken good care of it, um, hit it with 180 sandpaper first. That'll kind of open up the pores a little bit and allow it to take a little bit of varnish in, or uh, varnish, boiled linseed oil in and it'll make it, um, it'll just make it take better. And, you know, so why, why go to all the trouble to do this? Um, well, if you're like me, I'm, I'm tired of buying the rubbish from True Temper or the big box stores, buying rakes and buying a new one every three, four years because they break. You know, it, that, yeah, you can buy a tool uh, for half the price, but how many of those have you bought? How many do you have? That's why the point of buying these high quality, nice tools and taking care of them is that we don't have to go through that. 
this hoe, if it's looked after and taken care of and used properly, will last, should last a long, long time, you know, uh, a, a lifetime for most of us. So it's, a, it's about, that's why, that's why we do it. Not only does it perform better, it's nicer to use, it's more of a, it's a pleasure to own and to, uh, to have, uh, but uh, it, in the long run, it's cheaper. We save money, you know, so look after them. Buy them once. What do they say? Buy once, cry once. And it's just a, a better way to go. So once, uh, once we get those all treated, then we want to look to our leather. And this video is probably too long. I think maybe we should do another. We'll continue this. Maybe we'll do another part of, uh, of winter tool preparation. Oh, I was going to mention, don't store your tools uh, in the house. I know it's really tempting. You've bought that uh, $150 Grand Force Brooks small forest axe and you really like it and you want to sleep with it under your pillow. I know, I get that. However, uh, the humidity change is hard on the handles. You don't want to have a tool that's used to being outside in the garage or the shop and you bring it in in the winter time where it's really dry and you're running your wood stove or electric heat or whatever you have it will cause that wood to shrink and your head will come loose. So you want to be sure and keep it outside. But on your tools, be sure you don't keep them on the ground, especially if you have concrete, because moisture collects on the ground. And that's true for your small engines, your chainsaws, uh, hand tools, they'll rust like crazy and it's really hard on them. So get things up off the floor, up on a bench or shelving as high as you can. Uh, it's not near as, uh, there's not near as much moisture up there. Coat everything with oil. I find I don't have to put anything really special on the, the metal to keep it from rusting. As I'm putting boiled linseed oil on the handles, as I'm putting Obanoff's beeswax on the leather, I've got the stuff all over the place. It's all over my hands. I'm just wiping down the tools. I'll just wipe them down and make sure I've got them all covered with those two things. Seems to be enough. So, but we're in a pretty dry area, so your mileage may vary. So. That's it. I got a lot of handles to treat and we'll, uh, maybe we'll do a part two on the, on the, the next step in treating the leather. But thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video. Good morning. Well, it's a good morning for me. It's very early. I find that I uh, am the most creative early in the morning and I like to shoot my videos and, and leave them overnight and then come and sit down over a good cup of coffee and, and do my editing. So, uh, do you like fall? Do you enjoy fall as much as I do? Kind of uh, that anticipation of winter coming and the snow and the... And I enjoy gathering all things together and having Mrs. Wrangler Star is working in the kitchen, busily canning and stocking the pantry and it's, uh, it's a great time of year. And the apples are coming. So I always look forward to the apple press. Over here, I've put a couple videos, uh, kind of the organ, kind of a fall organization theme. Um, the first one is my three things, uh, some tips on how to keep your shop and home organized, and uh, the other one is is like similar. I forget what it was, but it's good. Watch it. <laughs> you can, it may, might be something there that can uh, that can be helpful. I think that's all I have for you today. Yeah. Well, I'm cutting firewood today. I'm gonna head out, uh, and I've got a busy day. I'll be uh, uh, giving you an update on the picaroon, on the new hand forge picaroon, and that's working out very well, and and uh, why I like it so well. But uh, look forward to that coming up. So thank you all for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Mm -hmm.